Denis Diderato, the 5th of October 1713 to 31 July 1784, was a French philosopher, art critic, and writer. He was a prominent figure during the Enlightenment and is best known for serving as co-founder, chief editor, and contributor to the Encyclopédie along with Jean Laurent d'Alembert. Diderot's literary reputation during his lifetime rested primarily on his plays and his contributions to the Encyclopédie, many of his most important works, including Jack the Fatalist, Rameau's Nephew, and A. Lambert's Dream, were published only after his death. Biography Denis Diderot was born in Langres, Champagne, and began his formal education at a Jesuit college in Langres. His parents were Didier Diderot a cutler, maître Coutelier, and his wife Angélique Vignron. Three of five siblings survived to adulthood, Denise Diderot and their youngest brother Pierre Didier Diderot, and finally their sister Angélique Diderot. According to Arthur McCandless Wilson, Denis Diderot greatly admired his sister Denise, sometimes referring to her as a female Socrates. In 1732 Denis Diderot earned the Master of Arts degree in philosophy. Then he entered the Collège d'Arcourt in Paris. He abandoned the idea of entering the clergy and decided instead to study law. His study of law was short-lived however and in 1734 Diderot decided to become a writer. Because of his refusal to enter one of the learned professions, he was disowned by his father and for the next ten years he lived a bohemian existence. In 1742 he befriended Jean-Jacques Rousseau. In 1743 he further alienated his father by marrying Antoinette Champion, a devout Roman Catholic. The match was considered inappropriate due to Champion's low social standing, poor education, fatherless status and lack of a dowry. She was about three years older than Diderot. The marriage in October 1743 produced one surviving child, a girl. Her name was Angelique, after both Diderot's dead mother and sister. The death of his sister, a nun, from overwork in the convent may have affected Diderot's opinion of religion. She is assumed to have been the inspiration for his novel about a nun, La Religieuse in which he depicts a woman who is forced to enter a convent where she suffers at the hands of the other nuns in the community. Diderot had affairs with MLLE, Babuti, Madeleine de Puyu, Sophie Volland, and MME de Meaux. His letters to Sophie Volland are known for their candor and are regarded to be among the literary treasures of the 18th century, though his work was broad as well as rigorous. It did not bring Diderot riches. He secured none of the posts that were occasionally given to needy men of letters, he could not even obtain the bare official recognition of merit, which was implied by being chosen a member of the Académie Française. When the time came for him to provide a dowry for his daughter, he saw no alternative than to sell his library. When Empress Catherine II of Russia heard of his financial troubles she commissioned an agent in Paris to buy the library. She then requested that the philosopher retain the books in Paris until she required them, and act as her librarian with a yearly salary. Between October 1773 and March 1774, the sick Diderot spent a few months at the Empress's court in St. Petersburg. Diderot died of pulmonary thrombosis in Paris on 31 July 1784, and was buried in the city's Aigle Saint Roch. His heirs sent his vast library to Catherine II, who had it deposited at the National Library of Russia. He has several times been denied burial in the Pantheon with other French notables, but the French government did recently announce the possibility of memorializing him in this fashion, on the 300th anniversary of his birth. For the moment, however, this idea seems to have been tabled. Early Works Diderot's earliest works included a translation of Temple Stanion's History of Greece, with two colleagues, François Vincent Toussaint and Marc Antoine Idis. He produced a translation of Robert James's Medicinal Dictionary. 
1745, he published a translation of Shaftesbury's inquiry concerning virtue and merit, to which he had added his own reflections. Philosophical Thoughts In 1746, Diderot wrote his first original work, The Philosophical Thoughts. In this book, Diderot argued for a reconciliation of reason with feeling so as to establish harmony. According to Diderot, without feeling there would be a detrimental effect on virtue and no possibility of creating sublime work. However, since feeling without discipline can be destructive, reason was necessary to reign in feeling. At the time Diderot wrote this book he was a diced. Hence there is a defense of deism in this book, and some arguments against atheism. The book also contains criticism of Christianity. The Skeptics' Walk In 1747, Diderot wrote that the Skeptics' Walk in which a diced, an atheist, and a pantheist have a dialogue on the nature of divinity. The deist gives the argument from design. The atheist says that the universe is better explained by physics, chemistry, matter, and motion. The pantheist says that the cosmic unity of mind and matter, which are co-eternal and comprise the universe, is God. This work remained unpublished till 1830 since the local police, warned by the priests of another attack on Christianity, either seized the manuscript, or made Diderot give an undertaking that he would not publish this work according to different versions of what happened. The indiscreet jewels in 1748 Diderot found the need to raise money at short notice. He had become a father through his wife, and his mistress M.M.E. The Puyu was making financial demands from him. At this time, Diderot had stated to MME, the Puyu, that writing a novel was a trivial task, whereupon she had challenged his comment. In response, Diderot wrote his novel The Indiscreet Duels. The book is about the magical ring of a sultan which induces any woman's discreet duels to confess their sexual experiences when the ring is pointed at them. In all, the ring is pointed at 30 different women in the book, usually at a dinner or a social meeting, with the sultan typically being visible to the woman. However, since the ring has the additional property of making its owner invisible when required, a few of the sexual experiences recounted are through direct observation with the sultan making himself invisible and placing his person in the unsuspecting woman's boudoir. Besides the bawdiness there are several digressions into philosophy, music, and literature in the book. In one such philosophical digression, the Sultan has a dream in which he sees a child named Experiment growing bigger and stronger till it demolishes an ancient temple named Hypothesis. The book proved to be lucrative for Diderot even though it could only be sold clandestinely. It is Diderot's most published work. The book is believed to be an imitation of Le Sofa. Scientific work all his life Diderot would keep writing on science in a desultory way. The scientific work of which he himself was most proud of was the Memoirs sur different sujets de mathematique which contains original ideas on acoustics, tension, air resistance, and a project for a new organ which could be played by all. Some of Diderot's scientific works were applauded by contemporary publications of his time like The Gentleman's Magazine, The Journal des Savants, and the Jesuit publication Journal de Trevoux which invited more such work on the part of a man as clever and able as M. Diderot seems to be, of whom we should also observe that his style is as elegant, trenchant, and unaffected as it is lively and ingenious, Letter on the Blind Diderot's celebrated Letter on the Blind introduced him to the world as a daringly original thinker. The subject is a discussion of the interrelation between man's reason and the knowledge acquired through perception. The title of his book also evoked some ironic doubt about who exactly were the blind under discussion. In the essay, blind English mathematician Nicholas Saunderson argues that, since knowledge derives from the senses, mathematics is the only form of knowledge that both he and a sighted person can agree on. It is suggested that the blind could be taught to read through their sense of touch. 
According to Jonathan Israel, what makes the Lettre sur les Avenue Gould so remarkable, however, is its distinct, if undeveloped, presentation of the theory of variation and natural selection. This powerful essay, for which Lamotry expressed warm appreciation in 1751, revolves around a remarkable deathbed scene in which a dying blind philosopher, Saunderson, rejects the arguments of a diced clergyman who endeavors to win him round to a belief in a providential god during his last hours. Saunderson's arguments are those of a neo-Spinozist naturalist and fatalist, using a sophisticated notion of the self-generation and natural evolution of species without creation or supernatural intervention. The notion of thinking matter is upheld and their argument from design discarded as hollow and unconvincing. The work appeared anonymously in Paris in June 1749, and was vigorously suppressed by the authorities. Diderot, who had been under police surveillance since 1747, was swiftly identified as the author, had his manuscripts confiscated, and was imprisoned for some months, under a lettre de cachet, on the outskirts of Paris in the dungeons of Vincennes where he was visited almost daily by Rousseau, at the time his closest and most assiduous ally. Voltaire wrote an enthusiastic letter to Diderot commending the lettre and stating that he had held Diderot in high regard for a long time to which Diderot had sent a warm response. Soon after this, Diderot was arrested. Science historian Conway Zirkel has written that Diderot was an early evolutionary thinker and noted that his passage that described natural selection was so clear and accurate that it almost seems that we would be forced to accept his conclusions as a logical necessity even in the absence of the evidence collected since his time, incarceration and release. Angered by public resentment of the peace of Aix-la-Chapelle, the government started incarcerating many of its critics. It was decided at this time to reign in Diderot. On 23 July 1749, the governor of the Vincennes fortress instructed the police to incarcerate Diderot in the Vincennes. The next day he was arrested and placed in solitary confinement in the Vincennes. He had been permitted to retain one book which he had in his possession at the time of his arrest. This was Paradise Lost. He read this book during his incarceration, and wrote notes and annotations on the book using a toothpick as pen, and ink that he made by scraping slate from the walls and mixing it with wine. In August 1749, M.M.E. du Châtelet, presumably at Voltaire's behest, wrote to the governor of Vincennes, who was her kinsman pleading that Diderot be lodged more comfortably while jailed. The governor then offered Diderot access to the great halls of the Vincennes Castle and the freedom to receive books and visitors providing he would write a document of submission. On 13 August 1749, Diderot wrote to the governor, I admit to you that the Pensies, the Bijou, and the Lettre sur les Avenues Gules are debaucheries of the mind that escaped from me, but I can promise you on my honor that they will be the last, and that they are the only ones. As for those who have taken part in the publication of these works, nothing will be hidden from you. I shall depose verbally, in the depths, secrecy, of your heart, the names both of the publishers and the printers. On 20 August, Diderot was lodged in a comfortable room in the Vincennes, and allowed to meet visitors, and walk in the gardens of the Vincennes. On 23 August, Diderot signed another letter, promising to never leave the Vincennes without permission. On 3 November 1749, Diderot was released from the Vincennes. Subsequently, in 1750, he released the prospectus for the Encyclopédie. Encyclopédie. Genesis André Le Breton, a bookseller and printer, approached Diderot with a project for the publication of a translation of Ephraim Chambers' Cyclopedia. Diderot accepted the proposal, and transformed it. He persuaded Le Breton to publish a new work, which would consolidate ideas and knowledge from the Republic of Letters. 
The publishers found capital for a larger enterprise than they had first planned. Jean Laurent d'Alembert was persuaded to become Diderot's colleague, and permission was procured from the government. In 1750 an elaborate prospectus announced the project, and in 1751 the first volume was published. This work was unorthodox and advanced for the time. Diderot stated that, an encyclopedia ought to make good the failure to execute such a project hitherto, and should encompass not only the fields already covered by the academies, but each and every branch of human knowledge, comprehensive knowledge will give, the power to change men's common way of thinking, the work, combines scholarship with information on trades. Diderot emphasized the abundance of knowledge within each subject area. Everyone would benefit from these insights. Controversies Diderot's work, however, was mired in controversy from the beginning. The project was suspended by the courts in 1752. Just as the second volume was completed accusations arose, regarding seditious content, concerning the editor's entries on religion and natural law. Diderot was detained and his house was searched for manuscripts for subsequent articles, but the search proved fruitless as no manuscripts could be found. They were hidden in the house of an unlikely confederate chrétien de la Moignon Malacherbus, the very official who ordered the search. Although Malacherbus was a staunch absolutist, loyal to the monarchy, he was sympathetic to the literary project. Along with his support, and that of other well-placed influential confederates, the project resumed. Diderot returned to his efforts only to be constantly embroiled in controversy. These twenty years were to Diderot not merely a time of incessant drudgery, but harassing persecution and desertion of friends. The ecclesiastical party detested the encyclopedie, in which they saw a rising stronghold for their philosophic enemies. By 1757 they could endure it no longer. The subscribers had grown from 2,000 to 4,000, a measure of the growth of the work in popular influence and power. The encyclopédie threatened the governing social classes of France because it took for granted the justice of religious tolerance, freedom of thought, and the value of science and industry. It asserted the doctrine that the main concern of the nation's government ought to be the nation's common people. It was believed that the encyclopedia was the work of an organized band of conspirators against society, and that the dangerous ideas they held were made truly formidable by their open publication. In 1759, the encyclopedia was formally suppressed. The decree did not stop the work, which went on, but its difficulties increased by the necessity of being clandestine. Jean Laurent d'Alembert withdrew from the enterprise and other powerful colleagues, including Anne Robert Jacques Turgot, Baron de Lorne, declined to contribute further to a book which had acquired a bad reputation. Diderot's contribution Diderot was left to finish the task as best he could. He wrote several hundred articles, some very slight but many of them laborious, comprehensive, and long. He damaged his eyesight correcting proofs and editing the manuscripts of less competent contributors. He spent his days at workshops, mastering manufacturing processes, and his nights writing what he had learned during the day. He was incessantly harassed by threats of police raids. The last copies of the first volume were issued in 1765. In 1764, when his immense work was drawing to an end, he encountered a crowning mortification. He discovered that the bookseller, Le Breton, fearing the government's displeasure, had struck out from the proof sheets. After they had left Diderot's hands, all passages that he considered too dangerous. He and his printing house overseer, writes Furbank, had worked in complete secrecy, and had moreover deliberately destroyed the author's original manuscript so that the damage could not be repaired. The monument to which Diderot had, given the labor of twenty long and oppressive years, was irreparably mutilated and defaced. It was twelve years, in 1772, before the subscribers received the final 28 folio volumes of the Encyclopédie, Au Dictionnaire Raisonné des Sciences, des Arts et des Métiers since the first volume had been published.